Welcome to the Downtown Download Virtual Podcast, where we hear from our members and learn something new about downtown Madison. This podcast is brought to you by the law firm of Carlson Black, O'Callaghan, and Battenberg, located in the heart of downtown Madison. Carlson Black specializes in commercial real estate, business, and tax law. Carlson Black is a proud DMI member, and they represent many of our members in helping to build a vibrant and inclusive downtown. Hello again, everyone. I am Jason Elster, president of Downtown Madison, Inc., here to talk about the Downtown Download. That is a lot of downs in the beginning of that sentence, uh, but here we are. We are very excited to have our friends from RISE. We have Scott Strong today, the executive director, and Maggie Wade, the director of development, to talk about what is RISE, what they're doing for the community, how they merged nonprofits a few years ago, and most importantly, about a new project they have at their facility and a capital campaign. If you haven't met Maggie and Scott, they are two fantastic people and why we wanted to bring them on the podcast is so you get to all meet them and think they're fantastic people. Scott, how are you doing this afternoon or whenever you're listening to it, podcast world? It could be the afternoon, it could be the morning. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great, Jason. Thanks for having us. <clears throat> well, it's good to see you, Maggie. How are you? I'm doing great. All right, we're going to just start with the fun stuff to begin with today. So in the green room of this, Maggie, I asked if they'd ever been on a podcast before, and Maggie said yes. She was she voiced over a podcast before. Maggie, you got to tell us about this experience. <laughs> so um, I have a, a friend from, I went to Western Kentucky University, and I had a friend um, who has this podcast called The Box. So you should go and see if you can find the box, but it's this, it was this supernatural paranormal type of um, podcast. And she had asked me to do a voiceover for a character in one of, I think it was like the fifth or sixth episode. Um, but I was the sister of uh, the older sister and much more adult grown sister um, years later after my sister had uh, disappeared in this like remote town. So. <laughs> I, it sounds pretty cool to me. Did you say Western Kentucky University? Yes. The Hilltoppers. The Hilltoppers. Aren't they the one with the, I'm sorry, you're, you're now going to see my sweatpants, but the one with the mascot that goes like this? Yes, the big Hilltopper, absolutely. <laughs> yes, and yes, you got it right. I am wearing sweatpants. I have multiple pairs. I use them every day. All right, let's get into it because RISE is such an important institution for the city of Madison, just a wonderful nonprofit. Scott, what is RISE? What do you all do? How did you come about? Um, tell us more about this great, great nonprofit. Uh, thanks. Actually, I'll, Maggie and I will probably take team this, but I'll get it started. Um, RISE is, if you think about brain development, so um, in utero, early childhood, all the way to young adults, um, we know through brain science that our brain develops through about, you know, mid to late 20s. Um, and there's a lot of changes that happen during that period. So RISE, if you think of us as an organization that serves the population throughout that age range, we do go a little bit above that with some of our evaluation services, but um, we start with some early childhood work, which I'll let Maggie talk about in a little bit, um, to uh, children, adolescent, and young adult mental health. Um, and then we also have an evaluation service where we do a lot of evaluations for the courts as, we're, as we help determine whether an individual has a mental illness or substance abuse disorder that's driving behavior where they should be um, routed through the mental health system instead of the correctional system. Um, so that's a quick overview of who we are. All of our services are um, participant driven, family driven. Um, we like to walk alongside our participants. They're the experts on their own life and who they are. Um, and we're just there to provide the supports and um, guidance to them um, and help connect them to services that'll be the most effective for them. So um, RISE actually, um, you, you know, we'll probably get into this a little bit, but it's a new name as of 2017. Um, we are the result of a merger that occurred um, there are two organizations, Community Partnerships is an organization that I work for, providing primarily mental health services in the community, and Center for Families, uh, which is an organization that's been around, was around for about 40 years, and they were four different organizations co-located to begin with that ultimately ended in their own merger, um, and they provided a lot of uh, early childhood uh, and family development services, as well as crisis respite. 
why is this work, you know, this work seems so important to our community. You know, why was it important for you guys to merge together to provide probably more services? I think that's, um, you know, really important story for a lot of the nonprofits that we hear that there are a lot of nonprofits in the city, but there are a lot of needs for, for groups in the city. So why was it important for you guys to merge and to help provide this really important work for our community? Uh, that's a great question. And I think sometimes mergers are um, the four letter word in nonprofits, but you know, if you think about it, we, the work that we, that occurs in Madison and Dane County is really built on collaborations. And so, you know, we provide early childhood um, development um, work, children and young adult mental health work, but all of the families that we work with might be involved in the housing system, or they might have food insecurities. They were, they're involved in the educational system. So we, we, we don't want to and can't, um, specialize in everything. We want to make sure that we have our niche and that we connect with other um, organizations. And so Center for Families and Community Partnerships are two organizations that actually work pretty closely together. There was a lot of synergies. Um, and then um, in 2016 is when the discussion started um, because they had a, an executive, uh, Meg Miller, who had been there for a long time and started the Respite Center, who was retiring. And um, a conversation had um, grown out of just an informal connection. And next thing you know, we're talking about merger because because of those synergies, we were able to take a look at some of the their early childhood work, their crisis respite work. Um, community partnerships was also providing some early childhood and then child, adolescent, young adult mental health work. And we also um, worked closely with our respite center for families and children that we worked with. And so it was, seemed like a very natural thing. and. Um, our boards got together, um, had a discussion. It seemed like um, it was a, it was a one of those matches made in heaven. In that, um, community partnerships had um, a lot of the kind of the financial and some human resources and programmatic infrastructure. Um, Center for Families contracted a lot of that out. There wasn't overlap with physicians, um, which was really unique in that there wasn't a risk of people losing their jobs because of a merger. In fact, we were strengthening both organizations because of the merger. Um, and so now we could actually combine all of those services under one roof to deliver that to families. So if they need respite services and they're involved in our Children Come First program or our community CCS program, they could use the respite center and not have to retell their story. Um, so it just seemed like a, a great time. The timing was right. And I think mergers are a, a great opportunity for nonprofits to take some of their strengths and skills and put them together and uh, just expand upon what we, what we do well. You know, I think to step back to why is this work with early ch childhood so important? Like what, what is it doing to, to set up a success for later in life? Uh, yeah, we know that um, children, um, academic success is really important to um, overall success of moving as a pathway out of poverty. Um, we also know that uh, many of the, the families and children that we worked with have experienced trauma. So by intervening early um, and working with young parents, and they're typically young parents, um, and typically at um, or above the poverty level, um, we are giving them some guidance and some information on how to have healthy attachment with their infants and their children, um, helping to look at developmental milestones and um, work on those connections and provide some early literacy and think of the parent as their first, as the child's first teacher. So some of the outcomes that we're having is that we're interrupting um, generational cycles of trauma we are having interaction or interventions with the parents who have their may have their own mental health challenges. We know that many of the mothers that we work with have high levels of anxiety and depression and then postpartum depression. So by working with us, we can actually help get them connected to services and supports that can reduce that, which makes them more available to their infant and child um, as and be, be present for them in their learning and their development. Obviously, this is you know hard work to do. You guys have a great facility right on Sherman Avenue. You guys are going through a project right now. Maggie, I would love to hear about this new project. It sounds like you're working with a lot of DMI partners. Findorf is your general contractor. Potter Lawson did much of the architecture and work. So great job, Jeff and 
and Beth, Operation Press Start, helping out with the program. Tell us about this new project and why you need to build, uh, uh, have an enhanced facility uh, for all this important your, and work you're doing. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, as Scott had mentioned, you know, the, the merge happened in April of 2017. And so we're renovating the Fordham Avenue location. So when the, the merge happened back in 2017, since then we've kind of been operating out of two main locations, Fordham Avenue and then uh, the one on Dewey Court. And so this is just an opportunity to create a space, a centralized space to house all of our staff um, in one place and be able to have like a centralized space for our participants. So we're really close to a lot of the community partners and we're also able to create a, a well-rounded experience, a smoother experience for participants coming in um, to our programs. A lot of the participants that come from, uh, you know, a lot of participants use multiple programs. Um, they don't just use one, they may be also enrolled in another or some may use the respite center, you know, while they're, they're visiting. And so um, it's, it's a really great opportunity to, um, house everything in one space. And it's really almost like that final step of the merge uh, to really have us come together um, as a staff. And I think, you know, um, Scott mentioned synergy. I think it really allows for more collaboration and better collaboration opportunities for our staff. I mean, it sounds like a really important project. And I love how you described it as sort of that last step of the merger, which is important to do, right? You guys all felt that to bring all of these services together was better for the clients that you're working with and that you now are creating that facility that you hopefully can, can live in for quite some time. So how can DMI members help with RISE in general and with this project in particular? I was gonna see if Scott wanted to add anything there. <laughs> Either one, you, you, that was, sorry, I didn't say who it was for. Either one can answer that question. That's right, Meg, you can take this one. <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. fill in the blanks if needed. So a great way um, is just, we have our website, risewisconsin.org, and we have all the information about the capital campaign, um, the renderings with Potter Lawson's amazing design, um, who did the architecture, the architectural design for the building. Um, and being able to just be up to date, we do have uh, our social media that they can follow. So they're able to keep up to date on um, how that's progressing. We did just start the renovation project or the construction um, earlier this month. And so that's, you know, hopefully going to wrap up at the end of the year. So keep a lookout on um, our social media and in different press releases for when we will be able to actually have that grand opening in that new location. Let's hope we have a live grand opening by that point. That would be great for everybody. All right. Now, you're not going to get off easy. We're going to do the fast and furious five here today. where We ask five rapid fire questions, whatever comes off the tip of your tongue. We're going to do it for both, for you, Maggie, and for Scott. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes. That was a very slow and tepid yes. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. All right. We're ready. Maggie, favorite book? Wild by Cheryl Strayed. Wow, you were fast with that. I really appreciated that. Scott, what's your favorite Madison memory? Oh, boy, when I was in college and I went to UW-Madison, I loved just going down to the terrace and just hanging out and watching people. Um, it's, it's kind of an ongoing memory because I keep doing that. <laughs> It, it, honestly, it, people watching never gets old. I'll admit it. it's kind of why I'm in the downtown business because that's where all the people are. But yes, the union is a great place to do that. All right, I'm gonna ask this question to both of you. Maggie, what's your favorite Yacht Rock song? Yacht Rock? Mm -hmm. Like Michael McDonald, uh, Christopher Cross. Uh, maybe I'm dating myself. Maybe you don't even know what that is. I'm so sorry, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, do you know what Yacht Rock is? I do, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, and, and it's interesting. I didn't realize this was Yacht Rock until I was reading something, but Dr. Hook and uh, um, yes. Sylvia, I love that song. There's a, all the Dr. Hook stuff I love. Oh, that, Dr. Hook is amazing. Good, good answer, Maggie. And I think the actual correct answer is 
I don't even know what that is. So well, well played, well played there. All right, Meg, we'll go back to you. What is your favorite Madison festival? Oh, I would say Atwood Fest is my favorite. Yeah, Scott? I've got to say um, Taste of Madison. It is something that we've been doing as a family for a long time and we really missed it last year. Well, let's, here's here to both Atwood and uh, Taste of Madison coming back this summer safely, safely. Safely. All right. For each of you, we're going to start with Scott. What's your favorite downtown food item? Oh, boy. Um, just about anything at the farmer's market. So Stella's bread or the or cheese curd samples. Um, both awesome. Uh, that Stella's bread is highly addicting. Brian, a good friend of mine, keep making the amazing bread at Stella's. Maggie, what's your favorite food downtown? I was actually going to say Stella's bread. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. Okay, what's your second favorite food item downtown? Oh, gosh. I just enjoy the food trucks. Um, I don't have anything specific, but I love, especially when it's super warm outside, to walk downtown and, and be able to enjoy, like, all the food trucks that are just lined up. So that's – I missed that last year a lot. We all miss a lot downtown, but I want to say a huge thank you to Scott Strong, the Executive Director of Arise Wisconsin, and Maggie Wade, the Director of Development, for talking to us today about the really important work that Rise is doing and the important project they have on Fordham Avenue. Hope you guys can learn more at their website, Rise. I think it was www.risewisconsin.org. You got it. Nailed it. Uh, please check it out there if you can help give to their campaign to this is how these projects happen. Scott, Maggie, thank you so much today. We really appreciate it. Thank you all for listening again to another episode of the Downtown Download. And last but not least, thanks to our friends at Carlson, Black O'Callaghan, and Battenberg for all of their great work in supporting Downtown Madison and DMI. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Hope you all stay healthy, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye now.